In this problem, we have a square of side D, and we have four electrons, each located at a corner of the square. In the middle of the square, we have an alpha particle. An alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons. So the charge of the alpha particle is equal to positive two times the elementary charge E. Now, we want to move the alpha particle from the center of the square to the middle point of one of the sides of the square. And the question is how much work is required to move this alpha particle from the center to the side, as you can see in the picture. Now, we're going to calculate the work done by the Coulomb force on this alpha particle. And work is defined as the line integral of force over the path along which the particle is moving. Now, if you think about it, as the alpha particle moves, the Coulomb force is not going to stay constant, so it's going to change. So calculating that integral is not straightforward. Is there another way to calculate that work? The answer is yes. Now, remember, work done by a field, it could be gravitational field, it could be an electric field, whatever type of field it is, work done by that field is going to be equal to the negative of the change in potential energy. So work done on this alpha particle by the electric field created by the electrons around it is going to be equal to the negative of the change in the alpha particle's potential energy as it moves along this path. So here's my starting point. Work equals negative delta u. And delta means change. Change means final value minus initial value. Rearranging my equation to reduce the number of negative signs that I have, I get work equals initial potential energy minus final potential energy. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the initial potential energy first. Here's the general formula for the potential energy between any pairs of charged particles. Uh, it's equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times the product of the two charges divided by the distance between the two charges. So the, uh, apart from the alpha particle, we have four other charges, and we are going to get one potential energy term from each one, basically, and we're going to add them all together. Now, because each of the other particles is an electron, so those are identical particles, and they're each at the same distance from the alpha particle, we're basically going to have four times the same term, which is the potential energy between one of these electrons and the alpha particle. So uh, to apply this formula, uh, first, so we know the charges, right? Electrons have negative E uh, as charge and the alpha particle as positive two times E. Now, what's the distance between the alpha particle and each of the electrons? Well, this is a square shape and the alpha particle is at the center. So the distance that should go into the formula is basically half of the diagonal of this square. And the diagonal is equal to uh, square root 2 times the side of the square. So let me actually uh, draw a picture. Here's the distance that should go into the formula, the dashed line, and this is half of the diagonal, as I said. And it's equal to square root 2 times d divided by 2. Here I have applied the formula by substituting the value for each particle's charge and the distance, of course. Now, this is due to a single electron. So each electron will contribute to the alpha particle's potential energy by this much. So I need to multiply this by 4. And this 4 cancels the 4 in the denominator. Now, this expression could be simplified a little further, which is what I'm going to do in the next line. After simplification, here's what we get for the initial potential energy of the alpha particle. As expected, this is a negative quantity, negative value. Uh, that's because the alpha particle and each electron have opposite signs. Now, let's go ahead and calculate uh, the, potential, the final potential energy of the alpha particle. After the alpha particle has moved, the distances that will go into our equation will be different. Uh, for the electrons that are at the near corners, the top one and the bottom one, the distance between the alpha particle and each electron is simply equal to d over 2. That's half of the side of the square. Now, for the electrons on the far uh, corners, 
uh, the distance that should go into my formula is the dashed line. We can calculate this distance using the Pythagorean theorem. As you can see, the top side of the uh, square and half of the uh, side on the left together are forming a right triangle where the dashed line is the hypotenuse. So what is the hypotenuse equal to in terms of D? Applying the Pythagorean theorem, here's what we get. Take the square of each side, add them together, and then take the square root. Uh, d squared plus d squared, over, uh, uh, d squared over 4. Add it together, you get 5 d squared over 4. And then take the square root. If you simplify, you get square root of 5 times d divided by 2. So that's the length of the hypotenuse dashed line, the distance between the alpha particle and each of the electrons at the far corners. Next, we go ahead and apply the potential energy formula to this case. Now, I pulled out the common factors, negative 2 times e squared, that's the product of the charges for each uh, um, particle pair, alpha particle and the electron, divided by 4 pi epsilon 0. Again, that's the constant, that's common to every term. Now, I have two of the distances, the uh, near electron distances, that's d over 2, that's why I have 2 divided by that distance d over 2, plus two more terms with the uh, dashed line distance 2 divided by square root 5 d over 2. So now let's simplify this expression. Here's what we get for the final potential energy after some simplification. It doesn't look super simple because of this um, uh, square root of 5 uh, in the numerator. So that's a little tricky. We can't really add those. We just leave it this way. And one thing you should uh, be care pay attention to once you come up with a, a relatively complex looking expression like this, look at the dimensions. So uh, we're, this is what we're looking for is really um, has a dimension of square of charge divided by epsilon zero times some distance d. Okay, uh, everything else is just numbers, right? So this has the correct dimension in that sense. So uh, that's one way to catch, um, you know, some mistakes at least. Now let's calculate work. Remember, work is initial potential energy minus final potential energy, substituting. The results that we got above, here's what we get. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. Here's the result after some simplification. We can see that work is positive. So positive work is done by the electric field on the alpha particle, and the alpha particle loses potential energy. So initial potential energy was greater than the final potential energy of the alpha particle.